Welcome to the podcast. My name is Emil. I'm here with uh, Nevo and with Dima. Um, in a moment, they will uh, introduce themselves in just a brief manner. And today, the podcast will be about building a product with open source contributors. So, Nevo, just introduce yourself really quickly, and then we will move to Dima. So my name is Nevo. I'm the product led growth at Novo. Um, I'm basically trying to grow the product using community marketing and everything possible to get as many uh, users and grow the community as possible. Amazing. Uh, so my name is Dima. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Novo. I'm 29, uh, build building in the open source uh, space for the past around I don't know, like 10 years doing different open source projects and, and in general, like really excited about uh, our conversation here today. Uh, so let's get it started. Let's get it started. I think that the main thing that we would like to discuss as the topic of this episode is, is basically how to build a product with open source contributors, like why to do that and how it could benefit to um, to those who are initialized this kind of initiative. So Dima, I know that you um, started Novu as an open source company. And I would like just to get a few um, maybe details on um, how is it going so far? And what do you think about this methodology that you are now uh, using in order to build your product. Yeah, sure, love to. So we started Novu as really kind of a pain we had, uh, Tomer and I, uh, the co-founder, uh, uh, the second co-founder of Novu, and we really had this kind of a pain point where we had it up to reinvent the wheel of building these sorts of uh, notification systems within our previous products. And initially, like, we didn't know, like, we didn't have, like, we had a feeling about the problem domain, but we weren't sure, like, if this is something we are only experiencing or does like other engineers like feel the same pain so we really like open source like a very small seed of the like the big idea we had about like this sort of a notification infrastructure out there and what we've seen it's like this incredible uh uh growth of people joining in from the open source community and really started to give us their ideas and like showing us that they have this exact same problems we we had internally and really from there, it's kind of grew. Uh, and a lot of like, sh in the Obster community really helped shape up really the, a lot of the product decisions we made and the directions we took uh, the company to. How long was it before you felt this kind of a real traction to the problem that uh, you guys were trying to solve? So we started as really like, we had like a small seed and, and Nevo, I think you even remember this, uh, we shared it with you. That's like once we had the inception of, of really the library, it wasn't like even an API and it wasn't a platform. It was just a small library. I think it was like 100 lines of code in general. But I think what we tried to do there is like, we outlined like the, 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 the pain like space. We created like, hey, this is the different parts. The implementation might be like with an API, without an API. And it began to gaining like some initial traction. We've done some stuff. It was during Oktoberfest. So we had like some initial people coming in and like saying like, hey, that's cool what you're building here. But I think really what was a turning point for the project is that once we outlined really like the vision and what we are trying to solve like in a higher level, or, like what pain points and we shared like only pains we had, like how can we build this uh, like real-time notification updates and how can we manage all of this in the back end and how can we create this more of a complex digest systems. And once we created, and I remember this day, it was like a dev to blog post we outlined, really speaking about like, hey guys, we want to build this, who's in? Like who wants to join us? <laughs> and, and it really, it was the point where like it really took off. Like I remember people coming into the Discord and like starting opening like new issues on GitHub and discussions and like things they wanted to suggest. Uh, and I think this is also like was the point where we also uh, met Nevo and we had a lot of kind of discussions about like, hey, it's not there yet, but people coming in just for the sake of the vision and, and wanting to see it happen as just as you said, Emil, uh, before. So it really was like kind of 
it's a problem. We want to unite together to solve this. Uh, and this is like really the beauty of, of open source projects, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because we when we work with contributors, we actually get a lot of knowledge. Like most company, you know, they start two, three people working together and they are very limited to the amount of knowledge that they have about their, their product in the end. But when we are building it, we can just write something, open a GitHub discussion, or just go to the Discord and write something like, hey, we're thinking about that, that, and that. What do you think about it? And immediately we have a big thread of people saying, okay, that's good, that's bad. I want to see this thing. Maybe we even can, in a few days, expect somebody opening a pull request for what we just asked, you know? So that's, I think, an amazing thing about, oh, like, building an open source company because you know you you can't you can't know what will happen tomorrow you know you can't predict what one of the contributor will do they can write an article for for the company they can create a pr that you've never thought about before right and they can open an issue in a place that they think that it should be fixed because there is a problem in this place and i think you already experienced this kind of like a, a feedback loop with the with our contributors right we just recently had someone who uh wrote an article i think maybe a few people that wrote articles about the project that we are building and this is also a great form of contribution and i would just like to hear your thoughts about it i mean how do you think yeah, so I think like uh, when we've discussed it with uh, with Nevo, I think a couple of times is about like there's a lot of ways uh, one can contribute. And a funny story: my wife is uh, now studying uh, UI and UX design uh, at her work, and I was she was like, "Hey, I'm looking like how can I like create projects and how can I help?" And I said, "Hey, you can use open source. Like you can find like libraries out there and like yeah. maybe help with the design of the logo or help with the design like of some icons or, or things like that." It's exactly. Small thing but they definitely can't because I think when you look at open source projects, there's a lot of uh, going on like as a part of like only the code part of it is the documentation, is the uh, like the visual aspects, the design. Uh, it's even helping people answering like uh, problems and issues they have. Maybe like a person encounters like a problem with launching the product locally and maybe have some like dependencies and you, and you can help with it is like basically Code is, is a big part because again, this is like the, the solution kind of to the problem space and the, the why people are coming, but like the entire ecosystem around it is like what makes a good project in my opinion, a good open source project stand out is basically by its community. And it's something you can't achieve like only by uh, maybe like a one mastermind behind it, everything, because it's it requires like a village kind of uh, uh, thing. You know, I've been running my own closed code, let's say like that, companies for a long time. I never uh, ran any open source company before, but I've never experienced people that just want to come and write articles about my company. I mean, I paid for people to write articles, especially in the early stage. But, um, you know, in our case, for example, there was just a student, you know, and he wrote an article about Novu. It was an amazing article, really. A lot of effort. We didn't even hear, hear about him before. And, you know, I went on a, on a meeting with him, on a call. Just wanted to see, like, maybe he can help us with some more stuff. And I got, like, blown away. Because for him, it was not about the money. It was how, how I can help you, how I can be better, how can I be more involved in the open source community space. And this is something that you don't expect when you're running just a normal company, right? And this uh, student, amazing student, he's going to do so much stuff in the future also, going to write more articles, going to um, suggest using Novo inside a university. And, you know, all they want is just recognition and be inside this uh, motion of uh, open source community. Yeah, it's it's really about like again, it's it all comes back to the single point. Like an, an open source project must have like a why, like really the what it tries to solve. And once you have that and it's like it's it's burning like inside people, so you have a lot of like kind of I call this types of contributors. Uh and, and we spoke about it a lot. It's basically saying that 
there are some contributors that are using the product and they have some issue. And instead of like waiting a lot of time for somebody like to fix it because they need it right now, uh, we don't expect nobody like to solve like the problems or bugs for us, but it's a lot, a lot of the times like people say, Hey, I can help with this. Like this is accessible to me to do. Like I can clone this code. I can see it. I can understand it. I can like help solving this issue. And I, the same goes like with people writing documentation and tutorials. And like, this is kind of the blog post uh, you were referring. And this is like a way to give like a small part towards this kind of a cause. Uh, and really use my own strength. Maybe I'm a good writer. Maybe I'm a good designer. I'm good with people. I'm good like with talking. And each person like in the open source ecosystem have his own like kind of strength. I maybe I'm too shy to write like a pull request with a lot of code. So maybe I can start with something uh, smaller or like create my own contribution for this. And and again, this is like really something possible only because you have like a big chunk of people united, like really towards the same goal or like to the same uh, vision of solving a specific problem. And really I'm, I'm as well as you, like really incredible to see like all of this happening around you, which you don't expect. You don't like really kind of plan to, and this is happening. And this is like, for us, it's what's give us the power and really like the, the fuel to keep building this and growing this and like waking up at the morning, like going sleep at night, like, Hey, this is why we do this. Uh, and yeah. Good point. There is a trade happening with contributors. And the trade is, um, again, for instance, we, uh, as Nevo mentioned, I think, is recognition. But I would like, again, Dima, get your thoughts maybe on what kind of trade, trades contributors could expect once they uh, discover some kind of an open source project. and why would they contribute? Not just like, not only because they, it solves their problem, but why, uh, why else would they uh, decide to contribute with articles, with uh, kind of uh, visual designs and things like that? I mean, what kind of um, incentives do you see? Yeah, so I think like, and this is, I, I can speak myself and why I chose like to contribute to, to open source projects. And this is comes to the point where I, like a lot of time you need to solve a problem and then you like, Hey, it's so much effort. It's so much time. And this is happening a lot in the open source community. You just look for something and, and there is like an open source thing you can use basically to solve your need or problem. And a lot of the times there is a lot of effort uh, gone into like solving this issue. Like if I, somebody just saved me like weeks from building something, it's only because they spent weeks of building it beforehand and, and a lot yeah. of the times much more. Uh, mm -hmm. And really, I think a lot of the, the contributors is coming to the point where they want to give back, like, because they, they use this, they want to give back and because they appreciate like all the effort that went into bringing this to this point. Mm -hmm. And they really have this kind of a specific uh, skill set that, that they can utilize and really contribute to the project in the way they can. And as we talked before, it's not only like, it might not only be code. And another kind of type of contributors we started to see is like a lot of people that coming into tech, like they're new, they might be, they don't have experience uh, uh, in development or software development. And in open source, you really don't have barriers. Like nobody does you like a technical interview before, <laughs> before you can create a yeah. pull request. So this is a good way also for newcomers to gain this sort of experience and then to showcase this in their like kind of a uh, 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 CV that's saying like, hey, this is, I don't have like uh, working experience maybe in our organization, but I have done a lot of coding. I've interacted, I've communicated with people. And this is like another sort of like open source contributors we're starting to see because getting your first job is, is really tricky because you must have experience to get the job and you must get the job to get the experience. So this yeah. is like a way to get out of this loop, uh, which I, which I see. Uh, and what do you see any other like types of categories or uh, like contribution, uh, uh, types? Well, you know, articles we talked about, we have a lot of people just like to be active on our discord channels and help other people not related directly to um, the code in our repository or something, but you know, just answering people. Some just like to put even memes, you know, not, not something uh, uh, huge, but you know, just yeah. some memes. Um, I like that people are using Twitter and LinkedIn to help us. For example, uh, we had a big lunch lately 
And, um, you know, we announced that we raised six and a half million dollars and we tagged all our contributors just, you know, to give them the, the respect they deserve for all, all, our, all of their help. But what really happened actually in the end is that all of them retweeted our post and it's actually created something bigger because we got so many new contributors from this because more people were exposed to our post and what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Twitter was amazing. LinkedIn also. Dev2 is just crazy. We just posted, um, you know, a Dev2 post about what we are building and so many people came and, you know, gave their like, came to contribute code. So, you know, and we just, you know, put it for our contributors and they also went there to Dev2 and, and so and helped us. So yeah. I think in, in terms of like the community, they help us in anything they need and we need. And also we help them if they need some. So, you know, we just can post something, get feedback and get help. And I think like a, a lot of the time, like really kind of a North guide uh, for me and a lot of the things I do and specifically here at Novo is authenticity, right? Because if you're like uh, coming to a point where you also show like sign of vulnerability, so you basically, you don't know everything. I have no idea maybe how to solve some specific issue. I have no idea. I have no experience in Vue or I have no experience in Python. But this is really coming and showing this point. Hey, I don't know something. Can somebody help me with this? Uh, and when you're coming like this open, I think people really, uh, really love to help because they see you don't like act as you are the mastermind. You know everything. You can solve everything and you just wait and I will fix it for you. Uh, really showing this. Hey, guys, I, 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 truly, <laughs> I truly need help. I have no idea how to do this. And it's, sometimes it's, it's not an easy thing to do because a lot of the time you have this kind of me personally, this imposter syndrome before open sourcing Novo, it was like, I was so afraid, like people will see my code, like what they will tell, they will laugh at me, you know? You uh, write no tests? You have no tests? How can yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's really kind of the point is you must be accept, you must become, you come as yourself, you come like clean without like any kind of sorts of guards or like things. And this is the point where people see it. And I believe people appreciate this uh, a lot. I guess there are some uh, founders uh, listening to this podcast now, and they probably experience a big problem in hiring developers because, you know, hiring developers worldwide, it's not something easy. Uh, good developers and also fit for the company in terms of you know, nice people working together. And I think one of the great thing about uh, opening an open source co company is if you have some great contributor, you can basically hire this comp contributor in the end. And that's amazing. Why? Because you are hiring somebody that's already know your code, already contribute something, already know exactly the, the logic inside the product. All you need to do in the end is just, you know, check if, if they are a good fit uh, in terms of, you know, um, working with other people and stuff. But that's it. If they have electricity at home, they can work together with other people and they um, ex they have good internet. Boom, hiring. No need to. And I think in this kind of stuff, it's almost 100% uh, success rate. I think and I believe you can also see not only like their code ability or their code knowledge, but I truly believe you can see soft skills as well. So things like how they will fit into our company's culture. And I'll explain a bit uh, more on this. When basically it's, it all comes down to collaboration, right? So we had a lot of like with a lot of our contributors, we have conversations like maybe he thinks something and I think something else. And we try to collaborate on this and really speak with each other and share our own opinions about this. And in, during these points, like it might be inside the pull request discussing an issue. It might be a conversation on Discord. You can really experience like how does it looks like to work with a person really be, before you have this kind of a commitment of hiring somebody. Because this is always like a case, uh, a kind of a hard case, uh, because you you can't know a person like from two or three interviews, like you can't really understand how he operates. And I think GitHub is a very good glimpse in also technological skills and also soft skills of how this person can communicate and, and, and operate. And it also like in a point comes in the other direction for us, you know, and well, I'm pretty sure you can relate to that is that when you kind of uh, start to work for a company and you have this audit, uh, we do like amazing, you know, end-to-end uh, -end testing and we do everything is tested and clean and best practice. And then you clone the repository for the first time and like, oh my God, where did they come to? 
<laughs> and yeah, I think, I think I think it's very important because this is one of the expectation of the candidate, not the expectation of the you know the owner of the co- the company, because the candidate already know exactly what he is going in. He knows all your code. It's basically only shifting that uh, now you're working for the company and not just contributing. But basically, they could do it from the other side also and keep being just contributors. Yeah, and I think for us, really, the the the, the reason we went like to have this kind of investment in the company and turn like to this path is basically from so many of the conversations we had, we understand this is a huge thing to solve and it requires so much time. And for us being able to hire and people from the community and saying to, Hey, you are making so much effort. We want you to come work full time on us. It's like wake up in the morning and this is like, you're going to be the task for you to solve. And, and they're excited about this. This is a great, great opportunity to bring like the people that are excited about the domain of the problem, have the technical expertise, and you already like evaluated the soft skills and like the cultural fit of how they will fit inside the company. And it's for us, it's like it's been working amazingly. I have a yeah. question. Maybe um, this will be a bit of a shift, but I know that as uh, as for the listeners that probably will. Uh, hear this episode, um, the question could be that what is the most hardest, biggest obstacle or barrier you felt at the beginning in like once you decided to making this project open source and what kind of an obstacle you are experiencing now after some runtime you already have? Yeah, so obviously like in the beginning is was to understand what we are building, right? So it was like it's it's it takes some time until you kind of we call this uh, internally like maybe sometimes a product community fit, like what's the offering, what's the problem domain you're trying to solve and to do that you have to have a lot of conversations. You have to speak with community members, you have to speak with people that accidentally download your package <laughs> and you want to understand like their opinion and why they did that and why did they come this. A lot of the time when your messaging is wrong, people like think you solve one problem, they get the, the download the library and then say, oh, it's, it's not what I needed. And this is also a problem. So we had a lot of this kind of uh, fluctuations where we needed to match, like understand we are speaking about and people understand what you're trying to solve. And really as time went by, is like controlling all the incredible amount of feedback coming into the system. It's like, how can we prioritize? How can we make sure that we prepare things with enough context to the different contributors that want to help with this? How can we provide them the tools uh, to do that? Because sometimes like people, they don't, they don't work like uh, at this as a full time. They might have some time after work or like maybe on the train on the way back home. So how can we help them really without friction, like set, set up the project, like make their own contributions without being stuck on like, Hey, this like NPM install is not working for me or like something is broken during the project setup. And how can we solve and really reduce this friction of really making a contribution without taking so much uh, precious time of our contributors life dealing with stuff unrelated to the things they want to help with. So, yeah, I think you touched a good point because um, when you are just building something with, uh, you know, closed code, so you come to the other developer and you see here, you need to run like this command in order for stuff to work, because if you don't run this thing, it will not work, you know? So you have to do some kind of like tricks and stuff like that. And we or, we already talked about how good it is to have contributors to speed up the process. But you know, sometimes other things make everything a little bit slower. For example, you have to give an amazing architecture that everybody can get get inside and do what they, what they want. You have to um, also, take the community in consideration everything that you are doing like sometimes you can't just go and say i want to do like that that's it no you have to listen to them not only the, the customers that are using the system but also the the community they also have their own demands if tomorrow we change our library to do something else they wouldn't like that right we have to really take care and it means okay we're going to build something let's open a discussion about that other than the discussion that we have internally um, and that can sometimes, I think, slow things down, don't you think? 
Yeah, it's it's definitely it comes with a price, but I think like the, the the things you get as a product out of it is like much higher, like in terms of the the return kind of an investment of time that you're doing there. Because uh, usually, like when people, like as you said, like when when like engineer comes to to a new company and he might take like two or three days to set up a project, we have contributors that like have 15, 20 minutes to do something and like they need to set up the entire project in that time span. And this is like always a goal for us. And we're not there yet. Like I know we we're trying to improve on this constantly. And like and the more conversation and the more contributors we have, the more like problems we encounter because somebody uses like a Windows uh, this specific version and this like uh, architecture for his uh, CPU. And like you you don't like not everybody works with a Mac. Not everybody works like in a specific environment. Maybe some people with slow internet. So. We had a lot of changes because of that. Like we switched from NPM to PNPM because it's faster during the download time and it saves a lot of disk space for our contributors. So this is sorts of things we always have in our mind, which I wouldn't even consider if it like wasn't open source, like in terms of the developer experience and bringing people on board. And I think it's really, uh, it really makes it better. Like also for internally, for like people that are work full time and also like one-time contributors that only wants to fix like some text or like some bug he needs to have because it's like like blocking his production environment from doing something. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. There, this is very nice that our audience that's using um, our system, Novo, are developers. Because, you know, we, there are this, like companies doing the same thing that we are doing almost, like very similar to what we are doing, but they are not addressing developers. Um, and we have experienced a huge growth because we're addressing developers, because developers know how easy it is to implement it um, inside the company or whatever they are working um, compared to, you know, just another thing that costs money, SaaS. It's probably something that the CEO will deal with or the CTO will deal with, it's not something that just the developer will deal with. And I think that's amazing for growth in general because, you know, it's, I can't tell you how many times I just go and install some library with an NPM install and just use it. Um, and if all those libraries were, uh, I don't know, companies that will take money in the end, they will make tons of money because there are some, <laughs> some libraries that I'm using all the time, you know? Um, and I think, I think taking this approach of using, not using, of working with developer is just, you know, amazing. Um, in that uh, kind of way. Yeah, and I think like we can speak about more of the kind of cost and commercial open source and really it's it comes down to a trade as Emil said before. Like usually you give back, like people always, like we speak with people uh, and they're like, so uh, how do you put all of your code out? Like what will happen? Uh, like, and, and, and eventually for us, it's like it's a trade we are performing. Like we provide a lot of value to the developers because without providing value, nobody would be here like nobody would open issues nobody would participate in our discord or write articles like because we are we're giving a lot uh and i think this is obviously uh comes with a uh, with a price and for us internally is like obviously we don't force anybody to use our cloud or like hosted version of the product uh but we provide it as like, hey, because we believe that we want to reduce the friction of the DevOps and managing your own servers. And this is like something we offer. We don't uh, require it from the developers. And we see this kind of motion where people get that and they see this and they don't feel intimidated, but hey, it's like hey, only the code is open source, but I must pay like uh, enterprise licenses in order to use this. And we've seen this as well as in open source sometimes. So for us, it's really giving a lot. And we don't like we don't expect anything. Like when Tamara and I started this, it was like we're just building it, and suddenly people began like joining and really joining the cause, and it became much bigger than we actually anticipated it will. So it's really kind of this trade of value. It's like you provide as much, and basically it's it's a, and also in a sustainable way that we, in order for us to keep building this as a company, we obviously have to, to find some way also to make money out of it. This is like a big question. We can discuss it. Uh, maybe in another episode uh, after that. Most definitely. I think that we we surely could just make another episode on even around the question is, of is there money in open source? And I think that we could uh, generate many insights on that topic. 
But uh, I think that um, for now, we will probably going to wrap this episode. And I want really to thank Nevo and uh, Dima. Thank you guys for participating, for giving your insights, for taking part of sharing your journey and your kind of experience in uh, the open source community and projects and all what you're doing. And really, guys, just thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.